Hey, what's up, everyone? This is going to be my review of Elseworlds, which was the Three Night Arrowverse crossover event. And I'm just going to start off by saying, I'm sure there's a lot of you out there watching this right now that enjoyed this crossover more than I did. I enjoyed it, but I just think it could have been more. Part 3 was the only episode I really enjoyed all the way through. I thought there were things wrong with Parts 1 and 2. Like I'm just going to go by and talk about each part. I'm not going to break it down like I do episode breakdowns because this video would be forever long. But in my opinion, Superman was definitely the best part of this crossover. I wish we would have gotten more of him because he was by far the best part. I enjoyed Oliver and Barry. I enjoyed their dynamic, but a lot of other things I didn't enjoy. Like part one, I enjoyed part one to an extent, but the first half of the episode, I did not enjoy that much. It went by so slow in my opinion, and just the swap, how they began the swap, and how... No one believed them. I understand why they didn't believe them, but I don't know. There's just something about it I didn't like. I didn't enjoy watching it that much. Just the fact that the team at Star Labs locked Barry and Oliver in the pipeline because they think they've gone crazy since they've swapped bodies, and for some reason they don't think that's a possibility, even though they've seen these crazy things like time travel. They've witnessed Flashpoint. They know of Flashpoint. Aliens have invaded Earth. Like... How do you not think it's possible that someone has reshaped reality and Barry is Oliver, Oliver is Barry? After all the things they've witnessed, they should at least consider this being the truth and look into it some before they go overboard like that. Maybe I'm just thinking into it too much, I don't know. I'm probably being overcritical, but I honestly didn't enjoy that. But I did start to enjoy the episode once they went to Earth-38 and saw Kara and Clark. I love Clark so much in this crossover. We didn't get a ton of him in part one any of them in part 2, which was very disappointing. So Barry and Kara went to Earth-38 in hopes that she remembered them, she knows Oliver is Oliver, and Barry is Barry, and she indeed does, she does not think one is the other. But while on Earth-38, Barry decides to have a little fun since he's the Green Arrow, and tells Oliver that he's gonna shoot him with an arrow, and Oliver's basically like, yeah, that's cute, whatever. He catches the arrow, and just like in the Flash vs. Arrow crossover, the thing that started this trend, started all this crossover stuff, Barry has some bows buried, and once Oliver catches the arrow, he shoots. Arrows shoot him in the back, and Barry just thinks this is fun. It's a fun time. He's laughing, and Oliver gets pissed. And another thing I hate about part one is they portray Oliver like he's a villain, like he's the bad guy. Iris has talked with Oliver because she thinks he's Barry at the time. Talking about how he made a deal with the FBI, went to prison, didn't tell Felicity, didn't discuss it with Felicity. It just annoyed me, them portraying Oliver like that. Anyway, standout moment of this episode was definitely the Amazo fight. I love Amazo because of Justice League and Justice League Unlimited. He was amazing in those shows. I fell in love with him, even though he's only in like two or three episodes. He was awesome. And I was excited for Amazo for this crossover. He didn't do much, but I don't care. We got to see his powers on display, how he copied their powers, could replicate them. Seeing him use Superman, Supergirl's powers, the super speed, that was cool. And just the fight in general was pretty awesome it was definitely the best part of this episode and it elevated part one for me it just elevated the crossover since this was the first part it elevated the crossover at that point in time for me so i was glad this was in there then at the end of episode the name drop at gotham they see deegan and the monitor in gotham talking on a building the reason they know it's gotham is because wayne enterprises or wayne tower one of wayne's buildings is in the background so it ends on the note, they're going to Gotham City. This got me excited for part two, excited for Batwoman, and I think the most disappointing thing about this crossover for me was Batwoman. I wanted her to be great, I wanted her to be fantastic, I wanted her to be amazing. And some people probably did think she was great, some people probably did love her, but I did not like her character. So many moments with her was so cringy in my opinion. Just that talk with Kara, the Batwoman and Supergirl talk, was so cringy, it was a cringe fest. Rewatching that scene hurts. Just the fact that Batwoman called themselves World's Finest, I'm like, why? Why are you doing this, Arrowverse? Please, don't. You don't have to nail stuff on the head like that, and Superman and Batman are World's Finest, I don't care what anyone says, they're the two greatest superheroes ever created. So yeah, the Batwoman stuff was disappointing, but I did love all the Batman references, all the Batman name drops in the beginning of the episode. Starting out this episode, I loved it. I loved the beginning of this episode so much more than I loved the beginning of part one, but then it kind of fell off in the end, I think. The exact opposite of part one. And also, I don't entirely understand the hallucination scene when Oliver is fighting a reverse flash and Barry's fighting Merlin. 
Because shouldn't Barry still see Eobard even though he's Green Arrow? Because it's still Barry, he should be seeing Eobard because I'm assuming that was fear toxin or something. They just say it's a hallucinogen. So I would just assume that they would see things from their own past and not the others. So I don't know, I was pretty confused about that, but... Another positive about this episode is Diggle. I love Diggle, he was great in this episode, just... He had some pretty great comedic moments. And towards the end of this episode, they eventually do get the book from Deegan, but the Monitor takes it back, gives it to him, he's like, I offered you godhood, think bigger, and he rewrites reality once again, Barry and Oliver are themselves again, but they aren't themselves because they're the tr Trigger twins, and end of the episode, they're on the run from cops, which are Diaz, Joe Wilson, and Malcolm Merlin. And that was so brief, I was kind of excited to see Diaz as a cop, and we got like, one minute of it. But anyway, they're on the run, they run into Dark Superman, and at the beginning of Part 3, we find out that that is not Superman from another Earth, it's not Superman from Earth-38 or anything like that. It is indeed Deegan, he shaped himself into Superman. And the staff at Star Labs, which consists of, I don't even remember who it all consisted of, I know it consisted of Caitlin, Alex, Danvers, and I don't remember everyone else, I don't even remember if Wells was there or not. But they are working for Dark Superman, they are working for Deegan, and Kara is locked up in the meta cells. But Barry and Oliver know in order to defeat Deegan, who is Superman right now, they need Superman from Earth-38. Fight Superman with Superman, so they need to find Sisko, figure out if he can still vibe in this universe. They find him, he's a crime boss, and their proposal to him in order to get him to talk to them is they ask him, do you want to take down Superman? And that piques his interest, they talk... They learn he can vibe, they vibe to Earth-38, get Superman. We find out that Superman has of course dealt with things like the Book of Destiny before, powerful magical objects that can shape reality and such. So they go back to Earth-1 to stop Deegan and we get some Superman versus Superman action. And Deegan's actually in control of this fight for a good while. But right before this fight, Kara convinced Alex to let her out of her pod because... She tells Alex about the Alex she has, how their sisters, what her Alex means to her, what her Alex would fight for, what she'd stand up for, she fights for what's right. So the Alex on Earth 1 does indeed let her out of the cell. So back to the Deegan Superman fight. Supergirl eventually goes, helps Superman get the book from Deegan. Superman begins to rewrite reality, change it to the way it is. Oliver is the Green Arrow again. Barry is the Flash. But Deegan ends up getting the book back, begins to rewrite reality once again, and... Barry's plan is for him and Kara to run around the Earth in reverse directions in order to st stop time so they can get the book from Deegan in order to stop him. And Clark says, you can't do that because when I was looking into the book, I saw that outcome and you both die. But they do it anyway. They do it to save everyone else. But Oliver goes and talks to the monitor, tells him, is this his test? I bet out of all the world you have gone to, no one has came and confronted you like this. If your test is to kill our two chances at survival or something like that, the two people that inspire hope, then as far as gods go, you're not a smart one. But once he gets back, time is indeed being slowed down by Barry and Clara. You see that they are indeed beginning to die, but as time is slowing down, Oliver shoots the arrow, it destroys the book. I guess it destroys the book. It like turns, it's still together, but it turns black. It turns to ash, I guess. So I don't know if it's magic capabilities or going to work anymore. But reality is set back to normal. It's back to normal. Everything's fine. Or so it seems. Superman, Supergirl, all of them go back to Earth-38. We find out that Superman and Lois are going to have a child. And Superman's fine with hanging up the cape because Kara's there to protect the city, the world. And Barry's and Oliver's talk is kind of heartbreaking because Barry asked Oliver if he made a deal with the Monitor, and we all know he did. He did something, and just things said in this conversation allude to Oliver's death in Crisis on Infinite Earth, that it's going to happen, that Oliver is finally going to die. The hero that started this whole entire Arrowverse is going to meet his end next fall, more than likely. But yeah, Batwoman calls Oliver and... Tells him that she hopes Deacon isn't going to be trouble. And then it cuts to Arkham Asylum and we get a tease of Crisis on Infinite Earths for fall 2019. And I'm ready for Crisis on Infinite Earths, but this crossover isn't the reason I'm excited. This crossover, Elseworlds gives me some worries about Crisis because if Oliver does sacrifice himself to save Barry and Kara, 
I'm going to be disappointed because I want Barry to die in Crisis because Barry Allen's death in Crisis on Infinite Earths is one of the biggest deaths in all of comics. And if they don't do it, I'm going to be very disappointed. Like, just because Oliver started the Arrowverse, just because he's the main hero of the Arrowverse, don't take away that epic moment from Barry. Don't take away Barry's sacrifice from the comics. One of the most famous moments in comics history. And I also feel like this is kind of early for Crisis. I wanted the Arrowverse to end on Crisis on Earth X, and it's looking like it's not going to, which is kind of disappointing for me, but I'm still excited. And although Elseworlds set up some things that are probably going to happen that I think are going to happen that I probably won't really like, I would prefer other things to happen, I still enjoyed Elseworlds. It was enjoyable, but there were things that I really didn't like about it. I'd say I enjoyed it more than I didn't, and the things I enjoyed outweigh the things I didn't enjoy. Because although I did not like Batwoman, I thought she was disappointing. I'm not really ready for her show anymore. I think her show might not be good. I don't know if she can carry her own show after seeing her in the Elseworlds. But Superman was great in Elseworlds. He was absolutely amazing. Episode 3 was elevated so much because he was a key factor in it. I wasn't that into the whole Oliver and Barry's body swap. I wasn't really interested into that that didn't really entertain me that much but the good thing we got out of that was Barry and Oliver realizing what each other had been through Oliver says he thought Barry had it all good it was all rainbow and sunshine but he's realized that Barry's lived a hard life he is he has just as dark of a past as Oliver so yeah instead of giving this a number grade I'm just going to give it a letter grade since it's a big event like this, and it doesn't really factor into anything bigger. Like, my episode reviews for Titans is going to factor into my season grade, so that's why I do numbers. But I'm going to give this a letter grade, and I'm going to give it a B. Just a solid B. I don't think it was amazing. It didn't blow me away. Crosses on Earth X is still the best crossover, in my opinion. I do think this was better than Invasion, though, so... Let me know what you thought about the crossover down in the comments below. Like, share, and subscribe if you're not already. I will see you guys sometime. <laughs>